Now on WSAR's Breakfast Club, it's the Bristol Community College Update. A monthly visit with President Laura Douglas on 1480 WSAR and 95.9 FM. Sponsored by Bristol Community College. Dreams within reach. Visit bristolcc.edu. Bristol Community College Program Coordinator Chuck Wanaki Otari is joining us on this Monday. Good morning. How are you? Hello. Good morning. I am good. Thank you. Excellent. All right. And uh, Chuck Wanaki is going to be talking to us about uh, supply chain management including international career opportunities and responsibilities of supply management professionals. So there's a lot to digest, though, I would imagine, but give us a, give us a, at least a beginning and an understanding of what that's all about. Right. Supply chain management is um, essentially a network. So if you think about a network that connects suppliers um, and then customers. So a company has to be connected to this network. Um, supply chain management has got the upstream, which is where you have, for example, the farmers, the manufacturers, and also the downstream where you have the retailers, um, delivery companies, the consumers. So there are a lot of um, intermediaries in between this particular network just to make sure um, supply happens. And today we live in a global village and this global village has been made possible by ICT. Um, so supply chain has a global uh, perspective and this makes it even a bit uh, complex. Um, for example, if you go onto your local gro grocery stores, the food you buy could actually be from um, uh, from various countries. For example, if you go to food baskets, if you go to Walmart, the food you buy from there, or you know, could have originated from other continents. Also, if you go to um, CVS, the pharmaceutical outlets, and other clothing outlets, the products you buy from them could be from various. Um, you know, countries. So we have this network called supply chain, um, which helps people now to get materials, products from different countries. Um, so it is very um, important today, and it has, you know, a lot of implications. And if I go on with some of those implications, you can now see that Consumers right now, today, are used to some foods that are very, um, that are exotic. They love those foods. They buy them from their local stores. And so they want, you know, they want to continue having those foods available. If you don't have them as a company or as a retailer, then you could lose customers because your competitors will just jump in. So what it means is that retailers are ready and happy to go into far countries to source those products. Um, so those are some of the implications. If you buy, if you go online to buy, you could be buying products supplied from somebody in China. Mm. Um, we we'll have various facilitators like Amazon, DHL, UPS various shipping line um, who make this to happen. So we live in that global village now, and then supply chain management is a way to relate to the suppliers, relate to the customers in order to make supply seamless, right. as seamless as possible. Let me ask you, uh, do you think things have gotten better as far as the supply chain? I, I think they've improved, but we probably have a long way to go. I would say it has um, it has gotten better because people are now able to get different um, products from different parts of the world. Um, however, it is important to recognize that because of its global nature, whenever there is any disruption of the supply chain at any point, 
it could have a lot of ripple effects. <clears throat> for, for example, if you um, look at the blockage of the Suez Canal, Suez Canal, which is in Egypt, in mm -hmm. you, know, you know, that was in 2021. Um, this was caused because of uh, the grounding of a, a ship. So this had a lot of ripple effect because vessels could not, you know, go past the canal. And it's a very important shipping um, passage in the world. Before we... Uh, also, I'm sorry, go ahead. Also, the COVID, you know, the pandemic did disrupt the um, supply chain. Yeah. So it has gotten better because people are not able to get students from different parts of the world. But, you know, it could be uh, very um, prone to risks and, um, you know, um, disruptions. Sure. Let me ask you about, about Bristol Community College's uh, Supply uh, Chain Management Certificate Program and also the career opportunities within this field. Right. At Bristol, what we want to do is to um, develop professionals who are world-class inclined. And what we want to do is to help people who will come into our programs to be connected with industry as well as other institutions, both lo locally, um, nationally, and around the world. Um, we have a program that will um, see students complete two semesters. The first semester will be for academic work. The second will be for internship. And we are going to cover areas such as global supply chain, warehousing, inventory. And then students ought to complete at least um, a total of 18 credits in order to be awarded um, these particular certificates. They can move on to get their degree in, for example, um, UMass or other um, institutions of higher learning. So our goal here is to give them that platform, that, you know, for, that strong platform, you know, to start to develop their careers in the supply chain area. All right. Excellent. Appreciate all that great information. Uh, Chuck Wanaki Otari, did I get your first name right? You did, yes. Chukuneki. <laughs> I, I love that name. That's great. Listen, I wish you well. Hope you have a wonderful holiday season, and thanks for the information. I would assume if folks want more info, just go to the Bristol Community College webpage. I think Absolutely. It, all right. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you. you.